Athletes Unlimited is the only individual championship in volleyball. For four weeks, the top players have drafted teams, forming new combinations of the sport's best. A unique scoring system tracks player performance, along with team success, to form a live leaderboard. In this, the fifth and final week, we will crown a champion. It begins now. Welcome to Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN, presented by Mikasa. The nightcap to your Friday of volleyball has been delivered to the table. It comes with a base of champion and a shot of the points leader. Team Edmund taking on Team Nunaviller. Outside hitters are on the menu. Welcome inside once again, everyone. Kevin Barnett joined by my partner, Missy Whittemore. We have Key Michael, our Olympian at large. And Missy, we enter our week five, our final match of day one. Leaderboard success, how has it come this year? By one factor or many? That's an interesting question. You know, for a player like Morgan Hintz, who is our third captain this week, I think win points have been a key because she's a libero. Then beyond that, we have four outside hitters who are in a position to still make a run at this. And because I know all of them have the ability to rack up a bunch of stat points, I think win points are also going to be at a premium for those players as well this weekend. Perhaps none more important than the win points at stake tonight between Betty and Leah. Yeah. Allie Linehan put in a good chase in the first match, coming up with a victory, won two of those sets. And the overall, this is how it laid out coming into tonight for our top six. Yeah, you see Leah Edmond has taken that number one spot in week one and held on ever since. Betty De La Cruz missed four matches away with her national team. And it's crazy to believe that she could possibly still be in position to make a run at this. Now, did never underestimate the big bath. I am so curious to see Betty De La Cruz tonight in the role as the hunter. She is our returning champion, used to sitting atop the leaderboard. And yet, because of those misses, she has some ground to make up. If there's any player in this league who can do it, it's Betty De La Cruz. I expect her to be fully locked in tonight. On the other hand, it's Leah Edmond who came in with top four expectations, a championship run. She has delivered on all of her own promise. Yeah, Leah Edmond is now in the captain's seat for the fifth week in a row. Four of those have been in the gold jersey. She has been a player on a mission, playing with such intensity over the course of this season so far. She has brought back this week six of her players from a week ago who were quite successful then. Experience paying for Leah Edmond in this system with 44 athletes across four teams. Drafting every Tuesday to play on Friday, Sunday, and Monday. This is the last week of that. You have to be in the top four to be a captain. That gives you an idea of what kind of year it's been for Leah Edmond. She has stayed at or near the top the entire time. Our first match, Team Linehan 81-72 in the overall, but it was close till the final set. So Leah Edmond is gonna have to try and continue to maintain that distance. It was 265 points coming in her distance over Allie Linehan. Allie Linehan added 140 team win points, hit 370, had 17 kills. I'm guessing she's in the MVP voting for MVP one. That would add another 60. When we have that confirmed, we'll take a look at our leaderboard and see where they're at. It was a pretty nice performance by the rookie, Ali Linehan. Yeah, and those, that's another thing that could differentiate between our outsides this weekend. Those MVP points could certainly come into play. We are ready for play here. Team Edmund in the black with gold as our leaderboard pops in. It will be live updating. And right away, it's through the hands of Betania de la Cruz. That's the only thing I've ever seen go through the hands of Betania de la Cruz. That's Natalia Valentin Anderson at the service line for Team Gold, who happens to be in the black with the gold numbers tonight. That's Natty. a Norseka conflict right there. <laughs> Natty has been Leah Edmonds' first choice in the draft the last three weeks. Natalia steps back, uses the platform that time, and it comes right at our broadcast position off of the block. We only saw two aces in our first match, one for either side, so we added 20 trees to the planet. Every ace during this year's Athletes Unlimited Volleyball season produces a commitment for 10 trees from Aspiration, thanks to the Aspiration Aces program. We love Aspiration's support of this league. Continuing support of Athletes Unlimited writ large as Edmund on the right side goes over the top. But one time, she'll be on the right side in that outside hitting position. 
Leah Edmond has just impressed me with her confidence in the captain's role. She has looked so comfortable leading a team from week one. She is a third year player here at Athletes Unlimited and it is showing. That ball tipped over the top and it's a winner. Jenna Rosenthal who had a trip in the captain's chair during this season. So Sydney Hilly, another captain in the league this year. Serves it up. And we mentioned all the different combinations. This is a new combination for number eight and number 81. Back again, Batania. This time down the line and it's wide left. You mentioned that new combination of eight and 81. That's Sydney Hilly to Betty De La Cruz. Brooke Nunneville and Betty Cruz have played together three weeks this season, but this is the first season that Hilly has delivered balls to De La Cruz, and you'll be interested to watch her delivery. What a different ball she is setting to De La Cruz as to what we'll see her deliver to Brooke Nunneville when she gets to the front row. All right, a little confusion as to the server. Shelly Fanning is going to come in and serve in place of Karis Watson. Cass Brown to the front row, middle for... Team Edmund, the women in black, because that ball is killed by Rosenthal, well wide of Kaz Brown, who has proven herself a blocking force in her first year. Kaz Brown, 28 blocks is tops in the league. We mentioned that Betty De La Cruz, as she steps back to serve, will have quite a hill to climb if she's to make a run at the title. But that kill just a moment ago from Jenna Rosenthal is one of the reasons why I think it's possible because she is on a loaded team. When you look at this roster, it may be Brooke Nunneville's first week as a captain, but she knew what she was doing in the draft. And Mrs. Coyasso has slowed down. Vanderwater takes a big cut, but a nice touch from the purple block is good. And that ball is off the hands and out of bounds. The captain, Brooke Nunneville, converts, playing at home here in Nunneville, the Arizona native. First time captain in her AU career. That's a big responsibility. We've seen it affect players quite differently depending upon their experience. White with the dig, right on the money. Vandewaita into the block again. Nunaviller, dug by White, couple of digs in this rally. It is hard to kill the ball in the stadium tonight. Vincent Sassi blocked by Kaz Brown. And there she is, the top blocker in the league coming into this week, putting in some work. What a nice battle we saw at the net. Obviously an out of system look for Saucy there as she has to come inside. But the block does a nice job with the disciplined hands. Kaz Brown's gonna take 12 points for that block right in between both of her outstretched hands. Another good touch. Middle back, Ed. Vandewaita tries to go inside, a net violation's gonna save her. I had some questions about Team Edmund and where the offense was going to come from. Where do you expect it to be besides Leah Edmund? Well, interestingly here, we've already seen several attacks out of the back row for, by Leah Edmund. So I think it's going to be plenty of Edmund, but this is a team who all six of the, of the players on the floor right now played together a week ago. So they tended to find a rhythm that worked for them. I think we'll see just enough of Kaz Brown and just enough of Coyazo to kind of keep the defense off balance. Okay, we might get a whole bunch of Saskia Hippa. Comes in hitting 176, but been asked to do a lot in a lot of different situations, appearing in all 36 possible sets. And you might wonder why some players have played 37. You might hear that later. Has appeared in 37 mm -hmm. sets because we had one golden set. Jenna Rosenthal misses that one. So a little bit of negative points there for the service error. That's minus eight. Remember, that's how our scoring works on the individual side. It's pluses and negatives. You can get more on if you become a member, auprosports.com slash membership. Join the Unlimited Club. Vote on game MVPs. You could be a player this weekend in determining the championship. You also contribute to the player bonus pool. 
be an important part of supporting this league. Backslide off the top of the cable. Edmund, left side. Betty, perfect spot. Set over into the fire and down. Notice Grote on the floor right now for Team Nunaviller in purple, getting that nod at the second middle blocker position opposite Rosenthal. The other middle blocker available on this team, Kayla Caffey. So we wonder if we'll see any of her over the course of the match, but Hilly taking it herself that time. You said just enough Kaz Brown. Yeah. There's a little bit more for you. That's exactly what they need. In system, send her behind. She loves to chase. Really nice attack there. All right, sets played by our top six. You know, Bethany De La Cruz only at 25. Missing four nights of gameplay here to go to the Pan American Games for her national team. Recalled there, that was not necessarily just up to Bethania. Edmund. That ball was tight to the net. Two touches, three, and it's good. Valentin Anderson will take a cut. Never met a setter, didn't want to be a hitter. Inside the block goes Edmund for the kill, much to the delight of the crowd. 8-6 for our current leader. One thing about Team Edmund is, I, as we've said about Team Hintz, who played in the first matchup tonight, they take on that personality of their captain. Team Hintz, obviously very defensive-minded. Team Edmund is a fiery team. Valentin Anderson, Kendall White, Kaz Brown. Leah Edmund has surrounded herself with players who are as competitive as she is, and I think that's a good thing. Let's be surrounded by competitive people. Absolutely. Thought for a moment that one would crawl over the net and work in Brooke Nunavilla's favor, but not so much. That's the one where server is. That net regulation. Yeah. Is that, can we get someone to measure that? Can we, <laughs> can we bring the chain out? Absolutely. Get our R2, Devaney McClarty, to bring the chain out and hang it from the middle, make sure we're all square. Working on Bethania again in reception. Sharp angle, wide right. So, but then you know, the crew's a little bit off mm -hmm. in this first set. I wondered what the connection would be like between she and Sydney Hilly, and at this point, I don't think that's been an issue. In fact, I see her right now. She's making the OK sign to Sydney Hilly and actually saying that was perfect. It's so that's the set she wants right there. Yeah, it's been clean contact, to your mm -hmm. point. Betty's one of those hitters, though, that could have a couple of errors and then come back and kill eight in a row. There was some high heat. That one's going to be slapped just high enough. Cleaned up by Marin Grote. How do you score an Athletes Unlimited? Well, Marin Grote is going to get a kill there. That's going to be plus eight. So that'll be added into her individual stats. Your win points are about 60%. So you have to win sets and matches. And then that MVP that you can contribute to does factor in. Grote, good, tough serve. Riasso, that one chipped off of Betty. I was looking at the numbers for Henesis Coyasso because she's played a critical role in a bunch of different situations. She's been on several winning teams. Mm -hmm. And she has a nice high good contact point snap, but she's hitting 138. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think that there's been times where the opposites have had to take more out-of-system looks than you would expect. And I think that's been the case for both Saucy, who's playing for Team Nunaviller, and then again for Coyasso. But both are in the top 15 on the leaderboard along with Willow Johnson. So three opposites in the league having pretty nice leaderboard success. And one thing for Kroos that's also been huge is 19 blocks. Yeah. She's been a shutdown blocker on the right-hand side. Serving it at Betty again. And back to her, this time too much steam. Just go high, hard into the seam. We were talking about opposites a minute ago. This is how it lays out for the top four. Yeah, obviously, Kayaso, Hippa, Johnson have been regular starters from week to week. Nia Reed has been in and out of the lineup this week, active with limitations, actually, so we won't see as much of her. Lindsay Vandewaita. Team Edmonds hoping to see a whole bunch of 21. One of the best looks we've seen from Vandewaita. Really nice, sharp angle. 
13-9. Now Team Edmund with a four-point lead. And still maintaining service. Shelly Fanning at the line. Benson cut that one off. And right now the high seam is good. If you're the opposite or the outside, you're wearing a number above 80. <laughs> Couple defensive ends getting kills on the left hand side. You think you could take a breath of relief, a sigh of relief when Betty steps back to serve because she's out of the front row, but she also happens to lead the league in aces. Nearly one there, right into the gap. None of Miller, good dig. She gets it right back. Pace to the outside, dug by White. Kendall White has been an excellent addition to this league. We're also asked to deal with some trash on the right. There's someone covering tip. Nothing into the fire on this rally. Hilly with a cover. Nana Miller finally threw the hands and out. And look at the extended communication here from Sydney Hilly as she's talking something over with her team, things that they're learning on the fly. This is a very new group together here for Brooke Nunneviller's squad versus Leah Edmonds' team, who, as we said, returned six starters from a week ago. There was some weirdness happening in that exchange during that rally. <laughs> Betty Long. So, but Donnie Dela Cruz continues to be a force with those 12 aces. She does have a, not a high number of errors, but I think more than she'd have if she was standing back there float serving. Comes in hitting 357 on the season in efficiency. That is tops among the outside hitters. And if you were to project her information or her performances forward to having been here for every match, she'd be right there with Leah Edmond. I think there'd be a 100 point difference between the two. Edmond trying to stretch it out from the back row. And you're seeing that connection between Leah Edmond and Natalia Valentine Anderson, her setter, who she has drafted first the last three weeks. Obviously very comfortable with that delivery. Leah Edmond has changed everything about her life. She quit teaching, but she hasn't stopped learning. Been working out with the football teams in the morning, and man, she is crushing. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Mikasa and by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. I'm a leader who really goes all out as soon as I step on the court. Um, I really will do whatever it takes to get the point. Nunaviller wins it! Team Nunaviller is honestly just enjoying the sport of volleyball. And I think being an undersized outside hitter, I 
prioritize different things than other people might. For example, like ball control is going to be really huge for me. And just getting big arms and just try to be an all-around great volleyball team. Welcome back to Athletes Unlimited. Team Edmund leads over Team Nunnemiller 15 to 11. But when you talk about draft st strategy, usually you have to have drafted a team before. That is not the case for Brooke Nellemiller, captain for the first time this week in week five. So she was open to a little bit of discussion with some other players about how to strategize this weekend. She ended up with a bit of a mix of Team Hilly and Team Hens from last week. One non-negotiable for her, Betty De La Cruz, off the board immediately. On the other side for Team Edmund, well, she's done this before. Fifth week, to be exact, that she's a captain, but her strategy remains the same. She went with Natalia Valentina Anderson first and foremost. She's comfortable with her. Second, she took Lindsay Vanderweider. She is comfortable in the passing unit with her. She loves the serve received next to her. She said, the one thing that's important for my strategy, comfortability. We then went to Google if that was actually a word. Indeed, it is. So comfortability for Team Edmund. It paid off in training this week. They didn't have to do much, just tweak a couple of things, maybe let the middles hit off their new setters. But comfortability paid off for Team Linehan. Will it pay off for Team Edmund? Key, what do you think about taking a setter first if you're a hitter? I'm a middle. I will definitely always take a setter first because you know what they're going to give you. And if you like a certain kind of attack, you have to get the setter that can give that to you because they have a lot on their plate trying to feed every people, every person, and feed them a different kind of set. So if you like one setter style, always go with that for sure. All right, 16 to 12, Team Edmund. Four point lead here in set one. 40 set points are going to be all important for both of these sides, especially Team Edmund, who has to keep pace over Team Linehan and Allie Linehan, who came home with a victory 81 72. And Allie, pretty nice performance by your squad. You put them back together and you ran it again. What's the same as last weekend in match number one? Um, a lot's the same, a lot of winning. That's the goal and that's what we did. Um, just tried to keep everything as close and similar to last week as possible. And I think we were pretty close. We had one starting difference and other than that, it was pretty, pretty similar. So that's what I like to see and it's been a great start. Are you just taunting the women in blue jerseys like, hey, I won this, we own you right now, or you go blue? <laughs> uh, I didn't say that, but if that's what you're saying, then I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, I think you came out of week two perhaps thinking, I hope I'm never a captain again. And yet, aren't you so glad <laughs> that you got this experience? How have you completely turned it around? Yes, I'm very glad that I kind of just had that mindset of like, okay, this stunk. Like, I did not perform like I wanted to. It was not the captain week that I had hoped for. But like, how can I grow from it? How can I continue to learn and learn from older teammates who are experienced and have done this? Um, just kept an open mind. And I came out week three just like calm. Like, I'm a baller. I can do this. Like, talking, the self-talk, the best I can. Um, whew, big point. Um, and it, it just, you build on from there. So I think just when things are tough and not going your way, like you can 100% control your attitude and effort. And that's what I focus on, control the me and the rest will happen. So yes, I'm very grateful for another week to be captain and just to keep learning and growing with this crew. It seems like you might've gotten an energy boost from someone with a wicked smart accent <laughs> who showed up to cheer you on. <laughs> yeah, so that is my husband's grandfather and my sister-in-law. Um, they surprised me today. So that was awesome to see them. And I have one of my best friends from college here as well. So I have a whole crew for the last week. All right, how are you going to manage the day off? You've got two more days of play. Where's your focus go? Do you even worry about points? Um, no, try not to think about it. Try not to look at the board. That's my tactic. Um, we'll get in, we'll practice, do a little serve pass, a little defense, and then um, rest as much as possible. We have some bodies that need some rest, so that's what we'll do. All right, get some rest. We'll see you on Sunday. Awesome. Thank you all. All right, Allie Linehan off a successful victory earlier tonight over Team Hence, and it was not easy. Yeah. Missy Whittemore, it looks like it in the final score, but it was not at all easy in that match. 20 to 14 is the advantage now in set one. Team Edmund looking very much like top of the field. Leah Edmund, she's got a little ways to go, but plenty of points still on the table here in this second match of the night. Allie Linehan right now on top.
check ball. Yeah. Check up. Right here. Check ball. Let's forget about everything. Let's see what you got. Check up. Oh, you serious? Check. Can you explain the feeling of being in that captain's chair? You're in the hot seat for sure. So you're just sitting in this little room with all the other captains. The time's going, you have two minutes and they'll warn you every 30 seconds. Well, you have like kind of a plan, but like not really. Like I always know who like my first pick is going to be. That's like the easiest one. Cause you know, the majority of people are going to be on the board still. But after that, it's kind of like a free for all. I love the fact that as soon as you get drafted, you get drawn into your specific room. Molly was my first pick. So she gets brought out of the 44 into the room with me and Brandon facilitator. It's a lot of wait and see and then once they make a decision then you make a decision. I'm really big on having a team that works well together. Anytime I draft someone I'm always asking them for their opinion. She can kind of from a middle perspective like who does she work well with and then hopefully I get setter next and so we can kind of round out all the pieces from there. Sometimes you kind of keep setters and middles together to keep that connection going on because usually if you can get that then it opens up everything else. You hear that? Setters and middles are the most important. You heard it here first. <laughs> Welcome back to Athletes Unlimited. Team Edmund up 20 to 14 over Team Nana Miller. And in case you had any questions, middle setters connection is the most important. You heard it from Leah. But I just wanted to give you a little visual of the draft that we just spoke about. Team Nana Miller is a little bit of a mix. These are the team colors that they played for last week. All purple and all orange. So these players will be pretty comfortable with each other. These as well. On Edmund's side, only four new players. Look at this line right here. Seven players together from last week. That's the comfortability that we were talking about with Leah Edmund. Key, how much of that developing over the course of a season have you seen now through three years? Is this something that's typical by the fifth week? Yes and no, because you may want what you want. You may have in your mind who you're going to take. But at the end of the day, like Leah said, it just comes down to what happens in the draft at that moment. So if some of these players get stolen, there's nothing you can do. You just have to assume or hope that no one's going to take the exact players that you want. And I think Leah Edmund did pretty well there. Yeah, consistency definitely paid off for Linehan as well, who went for a very similar strategy. Yeah, Key, I really enjoyed that piece to be able to actually see the draft. You have a picture in your mind of what you think it would look like, but to see the players there at their computers, you know, making those decisions, the two minutes, time on the clock, uh, it was just a great inside look at how this league is run. Thank you. Some people take it as stressful when you're in that position to, to draft your team. And I know I've spoken to a lot of players about when they have that a little bit of anxiety about being chosen or not being chosen, being chosen first or last. There's a bit of a feeling of being on the playground when you're a kid playing <laughs> baseball with your pick first or last. But at the end of the day, 44 of the best volleyball athletes in the world are here. So whether you're picked first or last, you can hold your head high. Thanks, Key. All right, back to action here. 22, looking for 23. Benson with the dig. Team Edmund trying to get closer to a first set victory. Another dig from White. She's been a force here in this first set. She's in double digits already. Kendall White, number one. Looking good in that gold and white. Love yeah. that combination on the jersey. She's such a fiery personality that she needs the right people around her that can feed off of that. And I think Leah Edmund is certainly one of them. I think they can feed off of each other. 23-15, a pretty good control of set number one by Team Edmund. Yeah, I love the fantasy football aspect of this, as though you got to actually go out and play your team. You could be the coach, you could be the manager. Uh, you know, maybe just call the Raiders. They have an opening. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure the Bears will have an opening shortly too, <laughs> given the behavior in Chicago. Kayasa just drops one over the top and into the middle. Interesting makeup of this team, Edmund. They have a couple players who I would just say are winners, Kayasso and Vanderweide. Both have 1,500 win points on the season. That is second only to Morgan Hens, by the way. And they're trying to add to it here with 40 points available. This will be their second opportunity to close it as another tip falls. 24-16. Now keep in mind, the aggregate win here too is important. The lead of eight, what could be nine with a side out. That'd be a huge lead coming in to set number two. Vandewida dug by Nunaviller. Part of that upgraded outside hitter this year. 
Edmond with a plus five for the dig. Vandewana <laughs> keeps it in play. Coyasso to close it through the hands, and again, none of Hiller. 15 points and digs just this rally alone. There's 10 for Valentin Anderson. Was there a touch? Nothing called. Julie Boek says no, and it's 24-17. These points could play by the time we get to the end of set number three. And that's why now you're going to see one of those captain's challenges. I think Devaney McCarty, our R2, I think she left the position even before yeah. anyone called the challenge there. She was ready for it. I, I'm a little surprised to see the number of back row attacks we've seen from Brooke Nunaviller while Betty De La Cruz is in the front row. And I wonder if that speaks at all to Hilly's hesitancy. It's her first week setting Betty. If on the run, she's maybe less comfortable. And that's obviously just my question. I, I don't know, but I just am surprised to see that much back row attack. Betty's two of 12 with four errors in this so first So maybe just good choices by Hilly at this point while Betty continues to work her way into the match. Yeah, give her a chance to get a little bit yep. of rest. Looking for a touch here. Vanda White has been very aggressive at the net in this first set. We had a question about whether the offense would come from one place or a combination of places. Vanda White, a three of 13. Showing in the stats right now as that ball is confirmed out. But I think Vanderbilt has taken really quality swings, you know, oftentimes creating out of system looks from the opponent. And I thought it was really interesting in Key's uh, draft follow up that Edmund said she actually chose Vanderbilt. She likes passing with her. That is so important. That ball does drop on the re opportunity. The re up is good 25 17. Team Edmund gives away a couple at the end, but overall dominant in set number one. As a follow-up to Linehan's victory, it's looking like consistency and comfortability paying off here in week five. That's been Leah Edmond all season. She has been incredibly consistent, and it's been a high-level consistent. More to come. Leah Edmond and her side, they are 25-17 up. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. Then just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Serious. Check. Right now. Uh -huh. 
you can't be a champion, especially in our sport, without five other girls being on your team and five of the people and three or four people on the bench. You can't do it by yourself. We have 44 girls here who are incredible. We have Olympians here. We have some of the best volleyball players to ever come out of their country. And I think it would be a huge honor to just be able to make it that far. And I think it shows the teams I was able to put together because I think if you can't win this whole league without your team. And so I think it's not only an award for me, but for all the teams that I got to put together because we had to win together in order to get to the point so it definitely won't be even though it's a singular medal it definitely won't be single to me it'll definitely be for every person that I got to play with this year that put me in that position to be able to do that an excellent perspective for Leah Edmond and team Edmond 25-17 chasing that title Missy you were doing a little projection leading into the weekend thinking about how it might play out well, pretty easy favorite, Leah Edmond, who's been on the top of the leaderboard after the last six matches. And then, of course, it would be too easy to say that Ali Linehan is in the hunt because she sits in second place. So I wanted to go a little further down the leaderboard. Betty De La Cruz not far behind in fifth, but I think obviously with the level of play we know she's capable of, she is always in the hunt. And Brooke Nunnaviller, a first time captain this week, slides into that fourth spot, but she is second to only Leah Edmond in stat points over the course of the season. So she has proven because of her offense and defense, she can rack up a whole lot of stat points. If her team can turn things around here in set, toe, in set two and get some win points to go along with that, she's more than capable. Let's go into the action right now with Natalia Valentin Anderson and the Air National Guard. Hey, hey, hey run away. Here we go, Leah. Let's get to rhythm. Yes! Yes! Oh my god. Swing, Leah! Yeah! Bravo! Ella está bien. Yo brinqué para afuera, pero brinco para el frente. I think you got a feel for it there. Some of these long rallies. Mm -hmm. Just laying prone on the ground. Yeah. Exhausted. Kevin Barnett alongside Missy Whittemore. Hope you're not exhausted of volleyball. We have a championship here. The chase is on for the weekend. This is our second match of a Friday night. We'll be back with you on Sunday as well as Monday to close it out and celebrate the third champion in the history of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. Will it be Leah Edmond, number 12, there in the gold and black jersey? Or will it be Ali Linehan, the closest challenger? Could it be Bethany De La Cruz, our 2022 champion? Everyone in the mix here in our final weekend of play. Aaron Grote going to step back to serve. Getting married in June. Her husband-to-be Jacob have been doing some planning while here, been getting ready. Marin just out of Washington. Excellent career there for Keegan Cook. Miss off the service for number 88. Interesting, I know last week when Brooke Nunneville and Betty De La Cruz were on the same team, there were some matches where they had started with Brooke Nunneville across the front row first and got stuck early. Obviously that has not been the case here today. They've put Betty right up there in left front to try to get things going from the start. The Edmund followed that one all the way to the corner and out. Sometimes you have to check it to the end. And I think one of her teammates must have been calling it in because she spun around and said, not in. So she, she made the call on that one and she was right. But Denny De La Cruz's career here at Athletes Unlimited, as is her international career, littered with records and honors. A little casual chip shot off the edge of the block for our last year's champion. Just a walk in the park for Betty De La Cruz as she uses some hands there. Most career kills, most captainships, most points, and plenty more, all in the Book of Unlimited, immortalized. 
Rosenthal playing her defensive responsibility well. Betty this time going high hands. Leah is there. Benson, perfectly placed platform. But then you another blast into the coffin corner. 3 3. Starting to look a little more like herself here in this second set. We saw the high blast off hands early in that rally, and then gets a second look and finding that favorite shot of hers into the corner. Yeah, she's back to zero now. Four kills, four errors. Most of those coming in the first few swings on 16 attempts. That poke picked up and sent over by Rosenthal. Trying to work off the hands of Saucy goes number 21. Lindsay Vanderweide successfully there, and her team has four points. So look at our live leaderboard. It is updating, and you can see right there, Edmund, 35-13, already close to Allie Linehan. I think undoubtedly she's going to pass her here. The question is by how much. The gap was 265 coming in. And never in any single weekend has Leah Edmund been outscored by Allie Linehan by 265 points. Yeah, Edmund obviously leading coming into the weekend. Linehan has competed in the first match, in which, by the way, she did earn MVP one point, so a boost for her. But I have a feeling by the time this one's said and done, Edmund will be back on top. That ball rejected. Big block by Vandewata and Brown. But it's called out of bounds. I thought it might have got a piece of her on the way out. Apparently not. No one arguing. Yeah, I think Betty ducked out of the way just in time. We have some players who pass really shallow in the court. Kendall White likes to take a little deeper start and then move forward as the server is contacting the ball. Yeah, one of the toughest moves as a receiver is to move backwards. Oh, that one is blocked and down. So they do get one, Team Edmund. I like the strategy of always moving forward. Mm -hmm, I do too. The thing you worry about is somebody cutting the ball from the service line or serving short and you're not right. close enough. And this is Coyasso, another one of the Puerto Rican international players who have populated this league. Natalia Valentin Anderson on the other side. And we had Lamaris Velez Augusto in the first one. Mentioned the fantasy angle here, auprosports.com slash fantasy. You can put your own team together. See how they do. If you want to go ahead and sign up. This week's leaderboard champion was Team Mystify Me. Here at Athletes Unlimited in our community now, you could be a part of the fantasy pick'em. And as we get closer to the individual champion, we'll also on Monday see which players have made the all-position team, which will be really interesting as well. Hilly right side to Sassi, who's dug up by White. Another superlative defensive effort from White. That one hits Coyasso and goes the wrong direction. Nice pace on that set from Sydney Hilly behind to Hippa, and I saw some extended conversation between those two in set one. As we've mentioned, lots of returners for Team Edmund, good chemistry. And it feels like for Team Nunaville are still working through some, some kinks here early, but that was a great delivery from Hilly to Hippa. Excellent touch by the middle blocker, Grote. And then a delivery by Batani de la Cruz out of the back row. That's how you convert a soft touch. Not always about stuffing the ball straight down. Yeah. And you saw just an extreme reaction there. It felt like from Team Nunaville after this kill, big, big cheers all the way around. I think it's more than just the point that they know they've got to get Betty going, and they feel like maybe they're getting there. It's bad news for everybody else. Right. Lee Edmund. This time the roll so shot soft. Saskia Hippo was all over it. No approach doesn't matter. Leah Edmund is a changed attacker in this season. Yeah, the change up there. You know, it was the huge power rip early on, and then the rally continues, and as you mentioned, not much of an approach on that second swing. Goes with a change up. And she has all the shots right now, playing with so much confidence. Leah Edmund plus eight just went up top of the leaderboard. You saw it change there live. Allie Linehan back down, but that's expected. 
as right. expected. The gap to make up is so big, 265 points, that it's not going to happen this evening. Right. The question is how far did Ali Linehan cut into it with those exactly. 140 team points as well as a superlative night of stats. But Danny De La Cruz shuts down Karis Watson and collects the stuff block points there, plus 12. And it feels like for Betty to make a move on the leaderboard, not only is she going to have to pick up the stat points here, but she's got to steal some win points from Leah Edmond. So they need a couple set wins here, and they need to go for the aggregate. There's another blast. That's what we have seen from Leah Edmond all season long. From the start, she has been dangerous. And the point to Natalia Valentin Anderson as she credits her setter once again. Nine, nine, set two. Valentin Anderson with the dig. Bump set right side. Grote all the way around the long way. That's good off the light. Absolute crushing offensively. The defense up to it before Betty chisels the edge. I think you're so right. The defense up to it. Nunaville are picking up her backcourt play. We've said over the course of the season, there's times where when Nunaville is on the floor, first of all, they take a look off the ceiling and Kendall White able to put a set up. But then it was the big dig in the backcourt from Brooke Nunaville that sets up the swing by Betty De La Cruz. And we've said over the course of the season, when Nunaville is on the floor, it feels like you have two Libros out there. She can make such a difference defensively. Natalia Valentin Anderson has a lot of skills. We might have to talk about her worm right yeah. there. I don't know. She's trying to stay on the right side. I noticed that. I don't know. Natalia, do you have a worm? Several athletes do. Yeah. I April think she Ross might. is the one that comes to mind the most. Marin Grote misses again from the service line. This one long now, one into the net. She'll get it dialed in next time. 11-10, Team Nunaviller with the advantage. They were pretty well handled from about the one-third point of set number one. So will somebody make a break here? Betty serves short. White could use her hands, went with the platform instead and cranked down the line from Van de Wyda. Kendall White is just being so aggressive in first and second contact. I've seen her cut off some free balls, Perfect passes to the setter. That time she clears everybody out on second contact. And as you said, could have used her hands, but kind of went with the platform and was a little trickier, not knowing where she's going to go. Van der Weide, six kills. The Donya De La Cruz now on one of those hot streaks. Eight kills and climbing. So eight for 20 with four errors, but all of those early on at about the 200 mark now. In fact, dead on. Hilly, tough serve. Rosenthal fights that one off like a horde of bees. That'll stay in play. Betty again. Big wind up, but an even bigger block. Harris Watson will pick up the points. And that comes after some serious communication on the part of Karis Watson, Kendall White, Lindsey Vanderweide. Those are the two players trying to dig that left side of the court. And they were giving Karis Watson so much feedback about her left hand. How can they defend Betty better? So much conversation goes into this one. And then you see the huge celebration as a result. It's a great point. She stopped deliberately and pushed straight over. Yeah. When she was given time, and there's another block. This time it's Hippa who is stopped by Coyasso. So that is Germany and Puerto Rico going head to head here in Mesa, Arizona. Kaz Brown has checked in alongside Koyasa, but as you said, it's Koyasa who gets all of that one. None of Villar off the cable dug by Fanning. Oh, dueling back row attacks. What a delivery by Natalia Valentin Anderson. She needs some bonus points for that one. Incredible. Valentin Anderson and Leah Edmond. What a groove they are in. Three weeks in a row. 
They absolutely know it, where the other is on the court, and Leah Edmond was waiting for it. She, in a, in a situation like that, a lot of attackers out of the back row would think, there's no way my setter's giving me that ball. Leah was ready for it. She fully expected that ball from Valentin Anderson. There's not a lot of setters who would be able to deliver that. This match right now mirroring international volleyball in several ways, chief among them, the amount of offense going down the middle of the court. That has been the trend over the last five to 10 years is drive everything from the middle and not just the middle front, but the middle back as well. Rosenthal dug by a charging white. Covers her own overpass. That's an Eric Sullivan kind of move to win $50,000 in Japan. That into the block. Oh, another beautiful delivery and another kill. Valentin Anderson for MVP. I'm gonna go check it right now. I'll be back. Go punch the tablet. What a My swing goodness. by Kayato here. Incredible. Team Edmund has a two point lead. It's not just because of the offense, it is all about the setter. Another crazy low back delivery and winner. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. Then just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. There's power in my voice. When I use it. To speak up for a cause. To encourage the person next to me. To help us hear the voiceless. To represent my people. To shine a light on the truth. To show others what is possible. To change the course of history. To remind you of the power in yours. There is power in your voice, but only when you use it. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Mikasa and by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. It is 15, welcome back to Athletes Unlimited, 15-13 Edmonds over Nunaviller. And I am in the crowd. I found a Nunaviller family. You are out in droves tonight, but Beth, you are the mom of book and the mom of Jake, who I know you're watching at home, and I apologize profusely for spelling your name incorrectly, but Jake is Brooke's brother. I know they were competitive growing up, is that right? Yes, and six years difference in age, but she just wanted to compete with him, and he was always stronger, but she still f was feisty. Well, I know he has attention to detail, but speaking of detail, she was drafting captain for the first time this weekend, and I know you were her coach growing up, so did you give her any tidbits? Did she use you as a resource for that draft? So she kind of shared with me who she wanted based on who was going to be left at the times. And so I gave my input, but she knows so much more than I do as far as like playing with people. So she's got it. It does look like she's got it, but this is a fantastic league and she's spoken about how much she loves it. But have you wa loved watching? What is it that you like about Athletes Unlimited? This is so fun. Like the environment here is amazing. And just, you know, having all these all these different players to play with and being able to see them all play against and with different people throughout it, it's just super fun. Well, do you think you'll be able to watch her at a professional level for years to come? How long do you think she's gonna wanna play? I think she's gonna wanna play for a while. Now that she can stay in the United States and play, that is a big deal. So I think she's gonna play for quite a while. Well, it is so great having you here. She's close to home. I know she likes to cook. What else do you guys get up to in your free time when sure, you're right around Arizona, right around the corner is home? Yeah, we, um, we kind of hang out together. We watch Disney movies together. We, um, you know, she cooks for me. She's an amazing cook, so, and I love it, and it's always healthy, so it's, it's really great having her here. 
When you think about a home-cooked meal, it's usually mom who does the cooking, but that's awesome that she cooks for you as well. Well, we've loved having her here. And Jake, thank you so much for <laughs> watching at home. But what is the go-to dish for Brooke Nanamiller to cook for you at home? Uh, she makes like this bowl that has tons of veggies in it and chicken and like quinoa. It's so good. Sounds delicious. I'll have to try it. But I know you're locked into the match, so I'll let you get back to watching. Thank right. you so much. Thank you. Good job, Key. I'm going to order one of those to the booth here so that I don't disappear. No disappearing right now for either side as Edmund is trying to get a lead over Nunaviller and has not really been able to extend it. Kevin Moreno alongside Missy Whittemore watching this second set. Now 43-32, the lead of 11 for Team Edmund in the overall. Keep an eye on that. Those all-important 60 victory points. Edmund must be Gatorated up. No disappearance here in set two. <laughs> That's right. That ball finds the floor. None of Villar stays within three as we find Rai Santos sitting in the chair. Hi. What's up, Rai? Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Hey, nice team, to see you. team Edmund, first set, you guys pretty dominant. What did you like that you saw from a setter perspective in set one? Oh, that we were very aggressive with our service. I think we were taking, ooh, so sorry. Did you guys just see that? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but we were pretty aggressive with our service. We, uh, it was a little scramble in the beginning, but we stay at it, and we were able to get you know our rhythm back, and Nati's just running the offense. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about the way that Nati is setting right now? Because I know you would love to play. I know you're the backup setter on this team, but she's having herself a match at the moment. Oh, she's having herself a tournament. Um, she's been doing great, you know. Uh, she's just using everyone, putting every attacker in their best position, uh, using as well the blocker on the other side. Good, good up. Um, and, and yeah, that's what makes her pretty successful. Right, I'm gonna be honest with you. When you take a look at these two teams on paper, and you see the arms for Team Nunaviller, including Brooke and Betty and Jenna Rosenthal. You know, on paper it looks like, ooh, you know, th this could this could go their way. What is it that's so special about Team Edmund? Um, I think, uh, as we said before, um, before the match, we said just put pedal to the middle and like stay on it all the time. Don't let them go up. Uh, and that starts with our serve. I think our serve has been pretty consistent. We're attacking them on the seams. We're attacking them short. And that's, you know, helping us uh, in the blocking and, and defense. So mm -hmm. taking advantage of that. Thanks, Rai. Thank you, guys. All right, 20 to 17, Team Edmund. While well, we're talking to Rai, Santos continues to be pretty dominant. Look incredibly powerful. Yeah. For me, it's been the setting. Yeah. I, I love to stoke up good hitters, fine performances. They talk about if a setter or a hitter is struggling, you sub that hitter out. If mm -hmm. the whole team is struggling, you sub out the setter. Mm -hmm. But when the whole team is firing on all cylinders. You applaud the setter. Absolutely. I, I'm a huge Lindsay Vanderweide fan right now. The way she has played, you know, for Leah Edmund to say I like passing alongside her, to draft her specifically for some of her passing attributes, and then to see her the way she's chipped in offensively. I think it's just such a well-rounded group. They're hitting 350 as a group. 28 kills on 72 attempts. They've been blocked twice and hit one ball. One ball mm -hmm. out of bounds on 72 attempts. I would say that means Valentin Anderson is putting in the window. All right, they need to do it for five more points here in this set to take a big lead into the third set, and that helps. So 21-17, their lead now 12 in the overall, 46-34. This is definitely a step up for the Edmonds Championship chase. And I would say there have been some off speeds that just shouldn't have fallen against Team Nunaville, or some of those I think they would certainly have to have back. Nazi stretching out, that was a good idea. Just a missed connection from Watson. Hilly will step back to serve. Saskia Hippa checks in. And some confusion as to the final call yeah. on that play. Kind of a weird looking play. <laughs> Leah Edmund gets a little clarification. Steps back into the passing line. Vanderwood have left that one to go. There's another tip that goes down. A lot of soft stuff to your point. Mm -hmm. They have used off speed to their advantage, uh, you know, whether it falls or just creates a disruption in the offensive patterns. How do you fix that? 
Yeah, I, I think it's a mindset. I think they've got to think defense first. And actually, Nunnefiller is a very defensive-minded player. But I think they also have to, um, you know, rethink their assignments defensively. You know, going to the huddle, okay, how are we going to release on this? You know, make your assignments very, very clear. This team has not played together the way that Team Edmund has. So I think clarifying assignments, who's going to release, who's not, and just making it very specific as to whose responsibility each tip shot is. Yeah, communication important. Fans, we're trying to communicate to you that you could end your season with a win, your chance to win a signed Mikasa Athletes Unlimited game ball. Morgan Hentz is going to put her signature on that. AU Volleyball hoodie, a t-shirt, a hat, and a tote bag, all included. Go to auprosports.com slash sweepstakes for rules and regs and to enter to win today. Go ahead and do that, auprosports.com slash sweepstakes. While we're at another timeout here, we have a chance to go back into the action, this time with Kayla Caffey. Kevin, interestingly, there are several comments by Kayla Caffey about chemistry, not necessarily volleyball specific in terms of strategy, but just about chemistry. And we wondered if that would be a factor coming in. This is a very new team in terms of Team Nunaviller players playing side by side. And again, six starters return from Leah Edmonds' team a week ago. All right, they're looking to return to another 40 points in this second set. We talked about what a sweep would do for Ali Linehan. She came close, getting 140 points. Team Edmund has come out and been pretty dominant thus far. That ball again rejected. Coyasso has been a force on the right. And the second swing is out of bounds. A common theme in volleyball. Get soft block once at the next one out. 23-18, two away from another 40 points for Edmund. A free ball opportunity though there for Team Nunaville and they're not able to convert. A serve. 24-18. Shelly Fanning coming in as a serving specialist and doing her thing. What did Rice Santos say to us earlier? Our serving has been a huge part of our success, keeping the pressure on. Set point. They gave back a couple last time. Do they close it in one? No touch and ball is long. It only took one opportunity and they now carry a 15 point lead, does Team Edmund. 50-35 into set number three by virtue of a 25-18 victory in the second. That will put their magic number at 11 in the third set to take the overall. Yeah, there's been some serious dancing going on in this gym, most of it by the women in black and gold. Kaz Brown and the squad leading big.
So this is Ava. I know, mommy. Yes, I'm talking about you. Stella is almost seven. We adopted her when she was a puppy. Ava is a COVID puppy. So she came from a family friend, and I was like, I want the smallest one. She'll give you these eyes, like very judgmental eyes. She just has this like look where you know what she's trying to tell you. She's a mixed breed between Chihuahua and Dachshund. We live in Arizona right now, so we get to go on a lot of really cool hikes. She is so energetic. This is her second season of AU. She loves traveling and she loves everybody and she loves going out and she always dress up every time like she sees like a bandana or her color she's like okay we're going now. They're taking me somewhere. She's just super chill though like she would rather just lay and watch her cartoons. Her favorite show is Paw Patrol. Awesome. <laughs> That's a key Michael piece for sure. For sure. 25-17, a 50-35 lead right now for Team Edmund. As I'm thinking about a dog in a pumpkin costume. Oh, hilarious stuff. It's, it's good to be an athlete in Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. It's good to be a fan of this league. And it's good to be Natalia Valentin Anderson right now. I, this is the best setting performance I can remember this season, if not the last two. Yeah, I mean, it, it, familiarity certainly pays off when it comes to hitter-setter connection. And to be with these same set of players two weeks in a row, boy, we're seeing it all come to fruition. This is a team that is executing, and with each good play, it seems as though their confidence grows. Just unbelievable, the deliveries we have seen from Bouncy Anderson, specifically going low and throwing the ball out to the antenna behind finding her middles, but I love the way she's spreading the offense. Spreading the offense with much success. Team hitting 350 as a whole. 12 kills for Edmund. She's checking in at a light 480 in efficiency. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, eight kills for Lindsay Vandewida. She's hitting 270. That's above her season output. And six for Genesis Cayasso. Uh, she's only hitting 500. The 480 for Leah Edmond is absolutely incredible. And a lot of that goes to Natalia Valentin Anderson, thanks to her putting the ball in the window consistently. Obviously, Sydney Hilly has had a knack for that this season as well. We've, we've seen outside hitters who play with Sydney Hilly typically really go off for the weekend. She does a great job of, uh, you know, finding the perfect set for each player. And I think she's being challenged in that role. This could be her most demanding role so far as a setter in that she has two very different outside hitters on her team right now. You might see some swapping there in terms of points and position between Hilly and Valentin Anderson just based already as that ball will immediately go out of bounds based on the win points already plus 40 twice for Team Edmund and Natalia Valentin Anderson. There are still 100 points available, but a huge leg up. For Team Edmund, they need to reach just 11 points in this third set to take home that 60. So that would be 140 team points. That would be Edmund equaling Linehan. Yes, exactly. We see a change in the lineup here for Team Nunaviller as Kayla Caffey gets the start in set three, but she misses a serve. Looking for a solution. What other options are there? And it might just be that the offensive onslaught is too much. Hip -hop. Through the block, right through the gap and down. Let's take another look at this one from Hippa. This looks like a really comfortable spot for her. I feel like she likes the ball just a little off the net. I feel like she's able to find her way around the block that way. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the offensive numbers get better as the match goes on and really as the weekend goes on. So many new pieces together here. Several times on the Team Nunaviller side, we've seen a ball just mm -hmm. out of reach, a player just out of position to make a play. And as Hippa will now switch out, and Nicole Edelman Cagliari will check in to serve and play back row, the backup setter, number 14. Edelman Cagliari actually played alongside Sydney Hilly last week. The two setters were paired together, and they ended up using Nicole Edelman Cagliari as an opposite. It worked really well for them last week. Nunaville are smartly done off the block mm -hmm. and out of bounds. Yeah, certainly making something out of nothing there. Looks like a tight trap set. Nunaville is able to wipe it off the block into the antenna. And remember, these are the captain's calls, too. All the moves mm -hmm. with the roster, all the moves 
during the week. Practice or no practice, when to practice, a serve there from the captain. And who to change when on the floor. That is something unique to this league and totally foreign to any of these players when they join. That's right, captain at captain. None of them are going right at Leah Edmond. As you and I had talked about earlier, obviously a receive error is negative points. And so that hurts Leah Edmond, but she also has more opportunities for positive points because she does receive the ball so often. And then of course we have some outside hitters who are really known to be outstanding passers and players from the service line tend to stay away from them. Right side. Yeah, backslide kill for Rosenthal. Back to the service line goes Team Nunaville. Last time back, they served up an ace, and that is another 10 trees committed by Aspiration. This year's Athletes Unlimited Volleyball season is enjoying support from Aspiration. For every ace, they will issue 10 trees. 1,260 coming into the weekend, and there's 10 more. Well, you set that up perfectly. Well done. On cue, we get an ace from Jenna Rosenthal, who goes right at the scene between Leah Edmond and Vanderweide. These are two players who actually really like to pass what next to one another, are really strong passers. And so some communication between those two, and they take care of it. That ball is long. Look out. Here comes Team Nunaviller. 7-3. Timeout time the other direction. For the first time in this match, Team Edmond has been forced into a timeout on their side. How do you lead? You do it from the captain's chair. Brooke Nunaviller and her side up. Check ball. Yeah. Check up. Right here, check ball. Let's forget about everything. Let's see what you got. Let us all. Yes, you can. Could be. Check up. Are you serious? Check. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. Then just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. All I wanna do is win, win, win. All I wanna do is win. I wanna be the winner of AU this year. All I wanna do is win. Molly McCage is a blocking yeah. machine. Winning this season would mean a lot to me. Morgan Hintz with the play of the rally. Chasse with attitude. Oh, the set of Sydney Hilly. Winning would mean the world to me. Win. The past two years, I've been super close. Leah Edmond explodes on the kill. Betty De La Cruz, are you kidding? Linehan unloads. It's just that ultimate validation. It's her world, you're just living in it. A look at the leaderboard before MVP points. A critical thing here, Missy Whittemore. Interesting, and it's always changing, always evolving. Molly McCage jumping into that fifth spot after such a great performance in match one tonight. Lots of points yet to be awarded here in our third set as out of the timeout goes Lindsay Vanderweide. Kevin Burnett alongside Missy Whittemore and our Olympian at large, Key Michael, is hopefully in a huddle or finding the next pet segment. One of those two things. As we take a look at that leaderboard, Kevin and Betty De La Cruz had dropped out of that fifth spot after a slow start. We know that obviously Leah Edmond with a little leg up after Betty De La Cruz missed some competition. 
And it makes me wonder if this particular matchup holds a little more weight for Leah as she goes head to head against Betty. Is there something to prove like she'd really like to get these particular wins against the con and against a specific competition? I'd say with Leah this year, it hasn't mattered who's over there. Mm -hmm. You're getting football mentality, all those workouts in the morning mm -hmm. with, with that team and the way that she's approaching her volleyball right now, she's killing everybody. Yeah. Another block there alongside Kaz Brown, Edmund teaming with Brown. I think Brown might have gotten it. But yeah, I've been utterly impressed with Leah Edmund this season. Former Kentucky teammates pairing up. They've done this a few times, let me tell you. Oh, that might have been Leah with the right hand. We'll have to wait for the official score. Set over into the fire, nobody home. I was surprised Morgan Hens didn't dive in and get right. that one, honestly. And it's just, it, the setters are so aware of those rotations where the middle blockers serve and play defense, and they love to find a few kills during those rotations. If you were with us for our first match, Morgan Hens put on yet another yeah. defensive display. Boy, she made Allie Linehan work so hard for kills. And Allie still had a fantastic night, but it means it took several swings over the course of a long rally to get it done. That ball outside and put down. 10-5, Team Nunavilla. All right, Nicole Edelman Cagliari, you got in the match. Your team is on a roll here. That, that can't be a coincidence. <laughs> what did you do? What did you do to turn this all around? Hey, we're just trying to turn on our energy right now and really control uh, the serve pass game. That's uh, our main focus, and so hopefully we can uh, keep Betty back here behind the service line, because we like seeing those aces. <laughs> we like seeing those trees go in the ground. There we go. Yeah, that's one way to keep her back there. Nicole, you played alongside Sydney last week as well, and you were used in some really unique situations. You actually played opposite some yep. defense like we've seen from you again today. Just talk about your role over the course of the Athletes Unlimited experience and all the different um, roles that you've been able to play. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, each each week has its own uh, challenges and uh if we need defense, if we need setting, if we need hitting, uh, I, I just do my best to fill the role for my team uh, to get those wins. So um, we're just doing whatever whatever we need to do right now um, to get strings of points and to keep the energy up. All right, I know you're watching. I know you need to be available. We'll put you right back in <laughs> I know. to the huddle. Thanks, <laughs> Nicole. Hopefully I don't have to run out. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, Nicole Edelman Cagliari and her side. Look at this, 12-5. So they needed a, something huge in this set. If they can win this 25-10, which they're almost on pace right now. Mm -hmm. They could win the overall. Yeah, who would have thought? And the set. I mean, after those first two sets, no one thought that was even a possibility. Well, that's why they play the games, I've been told, Missy Whittemore. Completely. That's why they play the game. Blasting through the block goes Edmund. Completely different team here is Team Nunaviller in set three, but it's the same Leah Edmond as she blasts through another block. 12-6, Nunaviller has doubled up. Taking a look at the set three hitting efficiencies. 220 for Team Edmond, 570 for Nunaviller. That'll take Nunaviller out. Have to give it to the middle. Caffey, who did not start this match, delivers. Some changes here in set three, breathing some new life into Team Nunaviller as Brooke Nunaviller herself dives in on the short ball and makes a really nice pass. So here's the interesting thing. If you haven't watched a lot of Athletes Unlimited volleyball and normal volleyball here, if you're playing best of five, you would have an opportunity to go reverse sweep. Mm -hmm. Here we're playing three sets. That's going to be it. And you're going to play in the aggregate. That's going to work what we're working with here. And you have to keep Team Edmund below 11 points. And they're doing it right now, 14 to 6. As that set over is good. You have two more nights to come and enjoy this level of play tonight. has been absolutely insane. AUProsports.com slash tickets. Because you want to see crafty volleyball like that. Another tough serve. Edmund there way too early, doesn't matter, tips over the block. <laughs> Again, finding off-speed kills against those middle blockers who are playing defense, but as team, as Leah Edmund, captain, goes back to the service line after this tip shot that is just placed perfectly. She is not happy. Yeah, she is not happy going back to the service line, and she knows that she needs a run. 
Mm. Perturbed with the situation, now perturbed with herself. 15 to seven. Remember, they gotta keep them below 11 points. No one out there is thinking about that. Think one point at a time. Can they go on a 10-3 run? We're also in golden set territory here. Oh, down the line, Ripper. Vandewada looking powerful tonight. What a set from Natalia Valentina Anderson, because unless you're in system, I'm not sure that that ball, that ball's too fast to Vandewada, but because of the perfect pass, and she just gives her the line, I, I just am so impressed with Natalia Valentin Anderson's delivery tonight. Fanning back to serve. Team Edmund has scored in this rotation. Mm -hmm. Not this time. <laughs> 16 to eight. Team Nunaviller. The captain there with the kill, number two in purple. This feels like a breakthrough for Team Nunaville, no matter what happens here in this third set, because they've got two more matches this weekend. Lots of points to be had. Lots of points to be prevented right now, 17 yeah. to eight. This set has all but sailed for Team Edmund. The question now is the overall. Uh-huh. They need 11. Sydney Hilly making the motion of rolling it forward. She's like, let's keep this thing going. It is 58-52. Check it, make it 58-53. The wheel's completely off for Edmund. And Leah Edmund quickly motioning for a timeout. 18 to eight from a team that was dominant, putting a 17 and 18 on team Nunaviller in sets one and two. They now trail by 10 as we check in with Key Michael. Well, I went into the purple huddle. Actually, while play was going on, I went and spoke to a few of the players on the purple side. I said, what is the difference between the first two sets and this one? And four out of five people said exactly the same thing. Service pressure from the line has hugely increased since the first couple of sets. Well, that's really interesting because that was a key from Team Edmonds' team after sets one and two. They were kind of bragging on their service pressure and how they had been able to create chaos from the service line. Not the case here in set three. And the result is a huge run from Team Nunaviller, the captain herself, helping to lead the charge, turning defense into offense. Kayla Caffey, a switch in the lineup here in set three, having some success out of the middle. And it feels like this group is starting to mesh. We gave you Natalia Valentin Anderson early in this match when things were going well. Mm -hmm. How about right now? What does it sound like to be on the floor with the 27? Oh, he said it's my bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so that is money. Yeah, I know how we talked to each other. I said, I said, you go behind me. Yeah, oh, yeah, behind. Just watch and your player. And yes. you can make sure. I don't think it's going four. Good yeah. block. If anything, stay middle two and Brook on 30. Tírale, tírale, tírale. What is the saying? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame, shame on me. Yeah. Three times. <laughs> Betty with the dig. Out of the timeout, another point for Team Nunaviller. 19 to 8. Still having fun over there, Team Edmund, early on. Not right now. They trail by 11. And their lead is all but gone in the overall 58 54. Brooke Nunaviller just sneaks it over. I don't think anyone saw this coming. And now it's out of bounds. And I think that was long. You might challenge it to slow it down. If for no other reason, instead, Leah Edmond back to receive again, trailing by 12. But the service pressure continues. That time, a diving pass there left very few offensive options. Nunaviller, another short one. Edmund completely out of the offense. Vandewada picks up the slap. So they're still in the territory here. You can still side your way mm -hmm. to an overall victory. Right. Side out, side out, side out. You'll lose the set, but you're going to win the overall. 
And it's really one of my favorite things about this scoring system because it looks like all is lost here in set three, and yet it's not. You are playing so hard for each point because of the 60 points on the table for the aggregate score winner. Yeah, yet it's not. We talked back in the first set. It took three set points for Team Edmund to close it out. Will that matter in the overall here in the third? Betty tries to shove it down underneath the block. No going. Nunaville or the dig. Bethania. No touch. The lines person doesn't count. 20 to 10. So they're looking for one. They need a lead of six with five to go. This for Team Edmund is a match ball. It's a 60 point ball for sure. Coyasso from the line. Betty, pass, gets it right back and wins it. So another 60 point ball upcoming. If Nunna Villa wins the rest of them, we'll go to a golden set. I really just like the change of gears, though, here for Brooke Nunna Villa's team because with Sunday and Monday yet to come, they're going to leave this gym feeling a lot better about their squad. Excellent point. Lots more volleyball to be played on the weekend. Vandewada, good footwork. She'll get it back. Blocked. Hilly closing down the line. And Hilly with frustration all over her face after not even touching the last swing from Vanderweider makes some adjustments in terms of her block setup. And that time gets all of it. And all those points with the left hand. 22-10. Third opportunity for 60 for Team Edmund. Edmund can't do it. Caffey with the block. Are we going golden? No more timeouts for Team Edmund. No way to stop the momentum. Rosenthal has to serve in. Fourth chance to close. Where does Valentine Anderson go here? She's got Kaz Brown in the front row. Vandewida. Not a great pass. Betty. Not yet. Oh, didn't take the swing. None of Iller. Back to Bethania. Mumbaye! 24-10. Unbelievable. Golden set on the line. Set on the line. Vandewada inside. <laughs> we don't get what we wanted. We can't have nice things. 24-11, they hit their magic number. And 60 team points go to Team Edmund. And the tension was palatable there for, just, for a moment. All right, set point opportunity for Team Nunaviller. Backslide, Cappy, yes. And in quick fashion, successive plays so much decided. The run ended one point too early. A 61-60 win for Team Edmund. A nice punch of offense here from Kayla Caffey in set three to seal that third set win, but Edmund barely holds on for the overall aggregate point victory. And she, like Linehan, will walk away with 141 points on the evening. So, evening, so that's a wash for those two. All right, let's take you back into the action with the final point played in this one, 61-60. The decision for Team Edmund, who struggled to the end of set three. Yeah. So there it was, Team Nunaviller wins the set, 25-11, nearly a miracle comeback. Would have been the largest one we've ever seen, nearly a golden set. Fine performances at the end. I think, Missy Whittemore, you hit it dead on. Mm -hmm. The importance of that set for Team Nunaviller. Yeah, Nunaviller found something. It took two sets to get there, but they found something. They found something dominant in the third set, and I think we're gonna see more of that feel sorry for the two teams who have to play them on Sunday and Monday. Lindsay Vanderweide at 12 kills. She's with Key Michael. Lindsay, fantastic match for you. It was close there at the end, but what did you guys do to pull it out? 
Um, we just knew that we had to keep swinging. I mean, we were making errors that were in crucial times, but we knew we couldn't let up and start shotting because that's a team that's going to pick that up. So us just bringing that fire until the very last second, I think that's what made us finish like that. Well, we would have loved to see a golden set, but I'm sure <laughs> your team was not up for it. But what do you think made your team so strong in those first two sets? I mean, basically, this is the same team from last week besides the middle. So we definitely have that cohesion and we just have fight and drive. Everybody's going for every ball. It's just you can feel it on the court. Well, Leah said you were her one of her most important picks for a reason. She feels really comfortable with you in the backcourt. Did you feel that too with her? Oh, definitely. I think we play really well together. I'm normally a good passer and I know if I get a good pass, Leah's putting it away. So it's like A and B going together. Well, you've played a few different countries, Greece, Puerto Rico, France. Uh -huh. You're now here at Athletes Unlimited. Can you tell me what is one thing that's drastically different about this league and why you maybe love it? I mean, being here in America is huge for me. Being able to ha see my family, see my friends, play with people that I know and love, and being in this kind of environment is just like amazing. It's like no other, for real. Well, we're so glad that you're here, and uh, good luck for the rest of the weekend so in the much. hunt for some medals. Thank you. Back to you, Missy. Thanks, Key. I'll tell you, Lindsay Vanderweide's performance tonight was certainly a highlight reel. I think most people describe her as such a solid six rotation player, plays all aspects of the game really well, but she's also a player who on any given night can go off offensively, and that's what we saw particularly in sets one and two here tonight. She finishes with 12 kills, second only to Leah Edmond on her team, and was a key piece of helping them get over the hump there in that third set and get those 60 points. A look at our leaderboard. This is pre-MVP points. A little bit to be decided, but Leah Edmond did a nice job of holding her position. Yeah, Leah Edmond with a really good performance, just enough win points there to match Ali Linehan. We'll see what happens with those MVP points yet to come for the second match. Ali Linehan, of course, MVP won in her match, but such a Ali Linehan has closed the gap. For yeah, sure. closed the gap. It was closed 265. The gap. Yes. Yeah, we're under 100 now. The championship chase is definitely on. Team Edmund, it wasn't easy at the end. The third set proved to be the difference maker. 61-60, Team Edmund with the victory. Coverage of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball will continue Sunday at 7 Eastern, ESPN Plus. It'll be Nunaviller taking on Team Linehan. For Key Michael and Missy Whittemore, I'm Kevin Barnett. Once again, our final score, Team Edmund, 61-60. Lindsey Vandewada and Team Edmund with Leah Edmund victorious on a Friday.